You've tuned into another edition of The Break Room, a weekly conversation about how the city of St. Augustine works from those who do the work every day. Hosted by the city of St. Augustine's communications director, Melissa Whistle, The Break Room offers a closer look at the different city departments and provides updates on current and upcoming projects and events. And now your host, Melissa Whistle. Welcome to The Break Room. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Melissa Whistle, communications director for the city of St. Augustine. When we talk about recycling in St. Augustine, part of the conversation is actually about what we cannot recycle. Certain kinds of plastic containers, plastic shopping bags, strands of lights, power cords, things that tangle, things that will make the whole load unrecyclable. Even glass is something that we may be getting away from because of the high cost it is to recycle industry-wide. So I've invited the city's recycling coordinator, Olivia Smith, back to the break room, and she's going to help us find alternatives and places to take that stuff we're just not supposed to be putting in curbside recycling. Olivia, welcome back. Thanks so much. <laughs> that was a lot, but there is a lot going on with recycling. There's a lot of things that we do accept, but we don't often focus on what we cannot do and why. That's correct, Melissa. So um, industry changes nationwide have a lot to do with uh our material quality mm -hmm. control, and it differs from municipality to municipality. Uh, so to touch more on the City of St. Augustine's mm -hmm. recycling program, we really want to focus on the pioneer days of recycling, kind of the simplicity mm -hmm. of fiber material. That's your office paper, your newsprint, your cardboard. Uh, then we want to look at the plastics. As you said, there's been a lot of changes. Mm -hmm. So we're focusing on plastics one and two. To make that a bit simpler, number one is a PET. So that is a polyethylene. It's basically basically your water bottles, things of that nature um, that are uh, raw in color. They mm -hmm. can, so they can be turned into anything. Mm -hmm. Then you've got your number two, which is an HDPE. That's a high density polyethylene. So that is your milk jugs, your laundry detergents, things okay. of that nature. We want to keep the focus on those type of things, bottles, containers. Uh, then we are looking at, um, we still take glass at this time, but mm -hmm. it is a tough mm -hmm. market. We don't yeah. have a lot of local recyclers. Mm -hmm. um, so again, we want to find reuse right. uh, for that and reduction if possible. At this time, we are accepting it. And then finally, um, our metals. So we're looking at tin, aluminum, uh, things of that nature, steel, solar cans, um, your sauce cans, your vegetable cans, all of that can still go in. What, Biggest, if, oh. Oh, what if I've got a big piece of aluminum foil that's not dirty? So in past, um, <laughs> that type of stuff was acceptable. Okay. At this point, we're trying to focus on um, the contamination factor. So okay. again, we're simplifying mm -hmm. the process. And uh, the biggest thing I need to hit home to the folks that are out there recycling, we don't want to prohibit it, but we do want to make sure that it is of quality material. It needs to be loose, clean, and dry. So pizza boxes? Pizza boxes are a tough one. Yeah. They contain a lot of grease. So mm. if that wax paper is not in that pizza box to collect that grease, it's not going to cap capture it and it degradates the fiber material. Does that ruin the entire load, if you will, if I've um, got a pizza box? I wouldn't quite go that it? far that it okay. would ruin it, but it does saturate the other fiber material. So it downgrades it and it makes it tougher for the mills to recycle it. So everything is based on supply and demand. We just want to quality control what we're putting in those recycling bins. And when that pizza box comes through, does does our staff sort all of that? Our staff does not sort. And that's why having quality control at the curb is so essential. We need to, for the folks that are participating to have mm -hmm. some accountability. And then our folks doing the collection, including myself, mm -hmm. need to have that accountability. We transfer the material. So we are at their mercy as far as what materials are acceptable um, and if there's any changes to the markets. So I, want, I really want to rinse out that mayonnaise jar. I really want to clean out the, the containers, the cans, the soup, the corn peas, whatever it is I've got in those cans. Yeah, just take that few extra moments, if you would. Use your dirty dishwater, what it, whatever it takes right. to just clean it out. And when you talk about the number one and number two, that's where I turn the container over. Correct. And there's a little recycle symbol with a one or a two in the middle of it. Yes, and there's been a lot of campaigns about that nationwide to really streamline that information for folks because it has been so convoluted with the plastic market mm -hmm. especially. So ones and twos, paper products, and hard plastics. Correct. Um, and so let's talk a little bit about what I can't, what I, I shouldn't be putting in my recycling and where do I take it? 
So one of the biggest things that we struggle with right now is what we call tanglers. Mm -hmm. So that's anything from shoestrings to wire hangers, um, Christmas lights, communication cables, pantyhose, anything that you can imagine mm -hmm. is going to get tangled up in processing equipment. Uh, the number one um, kind of evildoer in those tanglers mm -hmm. are these plastic bags. Right. Folks are really out there trying to do the right thing, right. and they're sorting their own recycling using plastic bags. <laughs> However, those do not get recycled on a curbside level. Those need to go back to the retailers. Okay. So there's a lot of retailers out there that are taking these type of commodities and they strictly have processors that focus on that material. So if I've got, so when I go grocery shopping and I get those plastic bags, right? well, let's talk about recycling. So maybe the first step in helping reduce those plastic bags Would is to bring your own, bring your own recyclable bag. There's a lot of bag. cool, yeah, cloth bags out there right. and reusable refrigeration bags. Um, so that is absolutely the first step. You're reducing the overall problem. But if you can't reduce it and you need to use those, make sure that you're using them internally in your trash cans. You're um, reusing them when you go to the supermarket or you're returning them back to the retailers so they can make new plastic bags. And when you're saying return it to the retailer, I'm not necessarily taking it into Publix to the customer service counter. There's right. stores that have bins outside. Yeah, a few of them to just off the off the top of my head. We've got Publix, we've got Target, some of the Walmarts, um, even some of the Lowe's um, and Home Depot are participating in that type of stuff. So not only plastic bags, but egg cartons, the okay. styrofoam egg cartons. You can still put fiber egg cartons. So another way okay. to kind of reduce, those can be composted. But when you go to the styrofoam level, those need to go back to the retailers. Yep. Um, light bulbs, things of that nature. You really want to look at your local retailers, reach out to them because that program may differ. For, pay attention to the signage and utilize those programs. Mm -hmm. That is what they're there for, and they're free. And there's plenty of places to take them. Absolutely. It just requires a little bit of effort on, on my part and your part to set it aside when yes. you go to the grocery store. Take a it, small effort take makes it back a big impact. You. It really does. Yes. really does. You are listening to The Break Room. I'm Melissa Whistle, Communications Director for the City of St. Augustine. And today in the studio I have with me Olivia Smith, Recycling Coordinator. We're talking about what with the do's and don'ts of recycling. Um, Olivia, you've been doing recycling for the city now. How many years? What have you seen? Let, so let's talk just years. recycling in general. Yeah, so seven years with the city. Um, before the city, I was a private processor and also a broker, mm -hmm. um, export, import. So I have gone from the processing side of things to the quality control buyer side and now as the coordinator educator. So it's come full circle. Mm -hmm. I've watched the industry change dramatically over the past 15 years. Um, and so that's what I'm here is to kind of lighten our load mm -hmm. and, and brighten the horizon and look at other markets we can utilize, resource. Um, as these markets continue to change, the commodities change, um, we need to be up front. We need to work together to bring mm -hmm. you guys the best program that we can for the best cost. And so that's what we're here to do is look at, instead of just recycling, that's kind of the end of the lifeline. When mm -hmm. you recycle and you um, use the landfill and things, that's the end of the life cycle. Right. Let's start at the beginning of the life cycle, mm -hmm. right? Let's reduce our overall waste. Let's look at not using straws. Let's look at reducing our plastic consumption. Let's shop local. Mm -hmm. Let's bring our, our cups and our dishware and things to work with us and to right. go containers out instead of using the styrofoam. So really bringing home, how can we reduce it or how can we reuse it? If we're done with it, it doesn't mean it's end of life. Right. Maybe we can donate it somewhere. So um, when folks call down at Solid Waste, I'm always trying to look for that next path, mm -hmm. if you will, of how can we get that to be reused again before it's the end of that life cycle. And you see a lot of that anymore. Um, the the I'll call it rubber for lack of a better word, but the the zip almost they're like Ziploc bags, but mm -hmm. they're made out of plastic, and it's not a bag I would throw away. I'd put it in the dishwasher, mm -hmm. and I would put either my sandwiches or my fruit or my leftovers in it. And instead of having it just to throw it out, I'm going to bring it and take it home reuse with me and, again. and reuse it again. And there's so many products nowadays that are made from recyclable products instead of having to go back to these raw materials, mm -hmm. right? And that's where it also drives up the cost point. So if people want to be conscientious, not only about the environment, but also their own finances, it's a good way to really start looking at fun projects in your house, mm -hmm. in your workplace of how can we reduce and reuse to be part of the solution. Even things, I know for me, I stopped using paper towels when I clean. I, I've started using rags and t-shirts or old hand sure, towels and things like wash. that, washcloths. Yep. And I collect them after the end of my cleaning my house and I wash them. But I'm no, now I find I'm not going, I, you know, I buy the big package of paper towels and I still have three rolls of it because it takes me a lot longer to get through it. Sure. 
And if you're a person that is into composting and gardening, which a lot of folks are, um, as we've seen from mm -hmm. Survey Monkey in mm -hmm. the past, um, so that type of stuff is compostable as long as it doesn't have chemicals residue on it. So if you are using paper towel, coffee filters, tea bags, you're still using that type of stuff. Don't mm -hmm. beat yourself up. But again, try to utilize that to its absolutely utmost advantage. Composting is a great way to do that. You can compost your fruits and vegetable scraps, as well as all of those type of items to give it that rich um, mm -hmm. soil that you would want to then put back into your gardening. Put it in your in mm -hmm. the garden, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned a buzzword there, hazardous materials, mm -hmm. pesticides, chemicals. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about hazardous waste a little bit before we sign off, because um, in addition to the recycling events that we do, we do have no-nos for the recycling events that sometimes tires, paint, chemical. Where right. do I put that stuff? So um, things of that nature need to go to St. John's County. So right. they facilitate all hazardous waste movement uh, within this region. So they've got two locations, um, both north and south end of the county. Uh, you can call them. Uh, they're 827-6980 for anybody listening. Okay. And they accept um, Monday through Friday paint, pesticides, chemicals, gasoline, mm. light bulbs, tires. Some of it may have a cost point. Some of it may not. So again, reach out to St. John's County Solid Waste and Hazardous Waste. They have a full program um, and you can look on their website. They have a huge list of what they accept and we do not. Got it. And white goods. White goods was a term that we all became familiar with after Hurricane mm -hmm. uh, Matthew. White goods are appliances. Correct. Household things. They're household appliances. Do we take those county? Where do I, what do so I do with that? So a couple outlets for those. A lot of folks know about the scrap yards. You can take that and actually get paid scrap metal price for it. Okay. So you can inquire locally if you'd like on that. Um, but if you are a resident and you've got some appliances you want to set out, give us a call down at Solid Waste. Um, and we usually schedule our claw truck. It is a larger item. So for that bulk item, we don't want to put that in the rear loader. We also would like to divert that to a recycling um, side. So we'd like to transfer that for that scrap metal. Um, so just give us a call at Solid Waste. We'd be more than happy to schedule you and get that collected. And last but not least, any of this, recycling, the bigger ticket items, things like that, paper, electronics, we don't have to wait for community events. Absolutely not. So the only thing that's special would be when we do that paper shredding that everyone mm -hmm. loves. That's mm -hmm. only by schedule. Um, but your electronic drop-off, right? So all your outdated um, electronics and things you can bring down to us Monday through Friday year-round. Just give us a heads up down at Solid Waste. Make sure someone's at the office, buzz you in that security gate, and offload you, and you'll be on your way. It is free of charge. We just don't accept hazardous material. Excellent. So, Olivia, you're talking about um, calling and, and getting buzzed in to the facility down on Riberia Street, but there's recycling available in terms of drop-off locations around the city. Absolutely. So we make recycling accessible for all. Um, if you look strategically in the historic downtown area, not only are there cans lining the historic streets, specifically marked recycling, but there are dumpsters in those lots as well. And that's for space restraint, business establishments, locals, tourists, things of that nature. Then we also have drop-offs in other areas. We have one on the island behind Arby Hunt Elementary, mm -hmm. one in North City, um, that is San Marco and US-1 mm -hmm. intersection. And then we have one here downtown in front of our solid waste wastewater treatment plant facility. So we do make recycling available, rather it's a private program, a curbside resident, or you're just looking to do a drop off okay. and they're available 24 seven free of charge. Excellent. I know sometimes you, you drive around town looking for places to drop off recycling. And I always feel like, am I allowed to be doing this? You feel like, you know, you need to do it in the dark of night, but it's there for anybody to drop off the recycling. Dry, we, clean, loose recycling. We want, we want you to drop it off. We want you to drop it off. Excellent. Olivia, it's always great to have you in the break room. Thank you again Same for here. stopping Thank by. You. And we will have you back again. And we'll look forward to um, any one of our new next upcoming recycling community events. Exciting. Thank great. you. Thanks, Olivia. As we wrap up another edition of the break room, I hope we answered your questions. If we didn't take a minute and drop an email, you can send that to info at citystaynog.com. Let me know if we missed anything or if there's someone you would like to hear from. We want to keep you informed about what's happening in and around the city, and most importantly, that you hear it here from the people doing the work and making it happen every day. Remember that in order to stay connected, you need to be connected. Like us and follow us on any of our social media platforms. You'll find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at City St. Aug. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time. You've been listening to The Break Room, a weekly program addressing projects and programs offered by the City of St. Augustine. 
Join us each week as the city's communications director, Melissa Whistle, has in-depth conversations with the people who make our town work to meet the needs of our community. The Break Room is produced by communications specialist for the city of St. Augustine, Cindy Walker, and engineered by Flagler College communication major, Lily McNeil. See you at this time next week for another edition of The Break Room.